Welcome to the Church of Obelis. In this video, I'm going to show you all the basics you need to get started with playing Ability Draft or to take your AD game to the next level. Now, it's been forever since we had a major patch in Dota 2, so we're all craving a little variety. If you want to spice it up and get away from Lina and Pudge in every game, AD is a great option. So at the start, the pick phase in AD can be quite daunting. There's so many options and so many synergies and interactions within your own team and the enemy team that you need to consider. For that reason, this guide is primarily focused on the pick phase, since the rest of the game plays out similar to a normal Dota game. In the ability draft, no pick phase is the same, since every player gets a random hero and everyone picks from a pool of 12 heroes abilities. That's the 10 heroes in the game, plus two more random ones. So first of all, let's talk about roles. Like in regular Dota, you want to have a carry, a mid, an offlaner, and two supports. The people who play AD are often a little more casual, and there's a high risk that you get too many people who want to play core, but ideally you do want to have the same kind of role distribution as in a normal game. Keep in mind that you can swap heroes in AD, which is especially useful if you're queuing with friends. The first thing you do at the start of a draft is to look at your hero model. You can see a bunch of details about the hero by just mousing over here. See these different heroes. You can see at the top their base attack time, their base damage, their attack range, armor, magic resist, and so on. Uh, also, you can see their base stats and their stat gain, and also very importantly, their movement speed. Generally speaking, if you've got a bad model, you want to play support. If you've got a good model, you want to play core. And especially if you want to play a right click core, you want to have a hero that's ranged ideally that's agi that has a good base attack time so this attack speed 1.7 there that's a standard attack time if it's lower than that it's good if it's higher than that it's bad and you should, probably shouldn't play right click on that hero model it's also important to have a uh, good stat gains so let's look at life for example he's not a good right click model because he's melee um he's strength his stat gain is kind of meh so you can make him a right clicker if you must. He's got good movement speed. That's something he's got going for him. But uh, probably this hero is better off as an offlaner or a support. Whereas if you look at uh, Drow, her stat gains are not great either. But she's agi. She's ranged. She's got great range actually. So she's probably a bit better as a right clicker. Or we look at Lina, she's a great right click model, she's got a faster than average base attack time, she's got really good stat gains, she's got a lot of range. The only downside is that she's got a slow movement speed. It doesn't really matter what the hero typically plays as in regular Dota. Lifestealer can be a carry in regular Dota because he's got three strong right click abilities. But in AD you're not going to get all three of those. You're probably going to get only get like one or two good right click abilities. And so Lifestealer as a base model just does not uh, work there. You want to rather put these strong carry abilities onto a hero that can actually carry them, like a Draw Ranger or a Lina or Silencer. Or as some extra examples, let's consider you've got Slark. Slark, of course, is normally a carry, also pretty strong carry right now. But in AD, he's not. He's got very bad stat gain. His movement speed is just uh, average. Base attack time also average. He's agi, which is great, but he's also melee. So he's not the worst right click uh, hero ever, but um, probably much better to play him as a support or a offlaner, where he's actually quite a good model because he's got good base stats and he's also got that night vision, which is great on any kind of role. So if you've got Slark, just play him as a support. Or suppose you've got Leshrak. In regular Dota, Leshrak is exclusively played as a caster. Um, but that's because of his abilities, not because of the hero model. While you certainly can play him as a caster in AD, you can also just play him as a right clicker. Because he's got excellent stat gains, like 3.5 int gain, that's really good, and 2.8 for the other stats, that's amazing. His movement speed is uh, very high, he's got a great attack range. The only downside is that he's int, but on the whole he makes a fairly uh, strong right clicker. So in regular Dota, abilities tend to be balanced around three factors. There's the inherent strength of the ability, there's suitability of the hero model, and there's synergy with other abilities. So the best abilities in AD uh, tend to be the ones that have high inherent strength, but on the other hand, don't have much synergy with the hero, 
and uh, don't have much synergy with the other abilities that the hero has. Those tend to be your strong first pick abilities. On the other hand, abilities that are very synergistic and fit well into the hero, those tend to be bad in AD. Let's take a look at Lycan, for example. You've got Summon Wolves, which inherently is a rather weak ability, but it's great on Lycan because he's got Howl, he's got Feral Impulse, and he's got Shapeshift, so three abilities that all synergize with the Wolves, and he's also got some great talents for the Wolves. So Summon Wolves is almost never a good ability in AD, unless you are playing Lycan and have like some synergy, or you're playing a different hero and have a ton of synergy with the Wolves. For the opposite example, take a look at Atrophy Aura. This also does some damage reduction, but the most important thing is it gives you a ton of bonus damage. And that's just not something that Underlord really wants. You have no synergy at all with the right clicking. He's melee, he's slow, he's got pitiful agi gain. So Atrophy Aura just does not fit the hero. But to make the ability actually useful in regular Dota, they have to give it very high numbers. Right? So it's an overstated ability put on a hero that uh, is not suitable for that. And so these are the kinds of abilities that tend to be really, really strong in ability draft. And just in general, it's oftentimes worth watching out for right league abilities on melee heroes, because being a melee is uh, inherently bad for right clicking. So to make melee right clickers work, they oftentimes tend to have very strong abilities, like the Atrophy Aura, other examples include Chemical Rage, Flesh Golem, Fury Swipes, Infernal Blade, and Bash of the Deep. The same goes for illusion abilities like Phantasm, Mirror Image, and Juxtapose. These abilities can be amazing on a nice ranged model. There are also some heroes who are balanced around having some very strong abilities and some weak abilities. This is a Chen, for example. You've got Penitence, which is okay. You've got Divine Favor, which is garbage tier. Hand of God is pretty decent, right? But the most important thing is Holy Persuasion. Holy Persuasion is amazing. This is single-handedly the ability that defines Chen. And so if you're actually someone who can play Chen, who knows how to micro, Holy Persuasion is an amazing pick in AD, especially since most other people don't like to micro play AD. So you can typically pick this up very late in the draft. It's often a good idea to combine multiple abilities with shard or scepter upgrades. Note that some shards and axe only work properly if you have another of that hero's abilities. For example, time work with axe applies a proc of time lock to all nearby enemies, but if you didn't draft time lock, this axe upgrade is worthless. Or take fire snap cookies, which has a shard that increases the jump range and applies one instance of Mortimus kisses where you land, but if you don't have Mortimus, you of course don't get that bonus, but you still get the extra range. Whenever you hear has an ability specific talent and you didn't draft the ability, you get a choice of uh, gold. It's 250 for level 10, then 500, 750, and 1250. And you should almost always prefer the regular talent over the gold, and it's the talent that's just really bad or really unsuitable to your build. In fact, the 250 gold one is so bad that you should probably skip the talent for as long as possible and also scale the plus two stats over it. Let's apply those principles to see what the best abilities are in Ability Draft. The first, you have Reincarnation and Borrowed Time. These are strong on any hero, never a bad pick, it's always great to have a second life. Then we've got Heartstopper Aura, which is strong on any core, especially if you're a tanky frontliner. Arctic Bone and Shadow Realm are incredibly strong on ranged heroes, and they're especially good if you have other Axe upgrades. They're also pretty good on melee, since you do get the bonus range. But just in general, right clicking is easier to do on a ranged hero than a melee hero. Shadow Dance is amazing for ranged cores, also quite good for melee cores. Also gives you a very good shard. Glaives of Wisdom is strong on any ranged int hero. In regular Dota, it's limited by the fact that uh, Silence's other abilities are more support oriented. But if you pick up Glaives of Wisdom in the first round and then uh, one or two more good right clicking abilities in the later rounds, you're going to have a very strong hero. Then you have Dispersion, which is strong on any kind of tanky core that wants to be a frontliner. We've got Wall of Replica, which is really good on ranged heroes, with multiple acts especially, because of Normal Punch. Normal Punch is a really strong ability, and it's very strong in particular on ranged heroes. It's not so much about the wall itself, but if you go for any sort of Aghanim's build, 
uh, normal punch is just amazing. Then we've got Windrun and Chikuchi, which are just strong on any course. Uh, also good in many support builds, just to add extra mobility and survivability. Then there's Kraken Shell, which gives you lots of tankiness and resistance to burst, because almost always you're just able to get off your BKB or other defensive item uh, before they burst you down. So it's good on both melee and range calls. Doesn't necessarily have to be sort of super tank. Then we have Atrophy Aura and Chemical Rage, which are great on ranged right clickers. And you can also pick them on melee right clickers. But uh, really, these are right click abilities. Don't pick them if you're not planning on making a right click character. Then you've got Cloak and Dagger, which is good on any hero because Invis is great and Dart is simply broken. Next, we've got Aftershock, which is completely broken if there are many spammable spells. In some pools, though, it's only a decent ability, but it's never terrible. Then we have Spirits, and there's currently a bug in AD where Ags makes Illusion spawn Spirits. So if you get this in combination with an Illusion ability, it's pretty much lights out once you get your Ags. But even without this bug, which hopefully is going to get uh, fixed in the next patch, Spirits is still great in any sort of Aghanims build. Same can be said for Vengeance Aura, which is incredible if you can combine it with some sort of strong high cooldown abilities. Also Tether, which is a great support spell if some nice heals are available. And just in general, stuns are always good, especially if you have reliable AoE stuns. Those are great, those are never a bad first pick, and keeps your hero quite flexible because stuns are good on carries, good on supports, good on offlaners, they're just always great. Now let's talk about some overrated abilities. These abilities aren't necessarily bad, but people tend to pick them too early while forgoing more important skills, or they might take them on unsuited heroes. So first of all, we have Finger of Death, which can be good in an Axe build, but is very lackluster in the early game. So you want to pick the second or third phase when you already have a good Axe ability, not in the first phase. Coup de Grasse is a very popular pick, but it leaves you with no power spec at level 6, and the DPS boost isn't even that amazing. It is a good ability to pick up second or third round on a right-clicker, but don't first pick this. There's almost always better right-clicker builds available. Focus Fire is kind of hard to make work because it tends to lead you to overcommitted to fights, so it's only really good on right clickers with high range and high mobility or they have some sort of very strong disable. Rearm can be amazing in the right kind of build but it really needs strong synergy and it's also kind of hard to play. And there's Jingle Mastery which is bad on most melee heroes and even on ranged heroes you need some sort of synergy for it to be good. Overpower, similar thing, needs some solid synergy to actually make it work. Grievous Greed is fine as an ability but you give up one ability slot just for farming. Never first pick this. It can be good in later rounds, but if you first pick it, then you're going to give up your most valuable pick for an ability that only makes you farm. And then usually your last pick is also going to be in a fairly low value ability. So in effect, you only get like two good abilities to, to actually build your hero around. And yeah, having a farm hero is great, but you basically have half a hero at that point. So... Don't fall into Grievous Greed Trap. And there's Shinada, which is a decent ability in ranged heroes, but people really tend to overvalue how much gold gets stolen. It's always much less than you think. Then there's Greater Bash and Time Lock, which are good on ranged strike clickers, but on melee heroes, just don't. And also, it's not a good pick on some sort of support hero. Only pick this on ranged strike clickers, otherwise, it's just not good enough. Then there's Essence Shift. For some reason, I cannot hope to fathom Lots of people like to pick this on non edgy heroes, and it's just really, really bad. Getting extra edgy on your int hero or your strength hero is just not that powerful. It's only good on a ranged edgy hero that's a right clicker, or maybe like a really fast uh, melee edgy hero that can keep up with people and doesn't get kited. And then finally, we have Essence Flux which gives you mana and nothing else. It requires some really good synergy to be worth the slot, and typically that's not going to be the case. Now let's talk about some underrated abilities. These are some of the best abilities that often make it to the later stages or go entirely unpicked. So they're the diamonds in the rough with which you can round out your build, so these are great as like a third or a fourth pick. First you have Voodoo Restoration, which now that it does damage is actually an amazing ability, and it's especially great on a frontline hero, 
The only downside is that it costs lots of mana, but it's really worth it. Next, we have a couple other healing abilities. Healing Ward, Hand of God, and Nature's Attendance. People just don't really like picking healing abilities, but these are actually great. They have good win rates. People don't like healing and they like uh, micro even less. So Holy Persuasion and Call of the Wild often go unpicked, but they're actually great abilities if you know how to use them. Then we've got Savage Roar, which has an amazing shard. So if you're already planning on getting a shard, this is a great ability. Moonlight Shadow is not very flashy, but just offers great value for your team. So it's always a decent pick as an ult. Smokescreen is a very annoying teamfight ability. It rarely gets picked early, but it's actually amazing. Then we've got Warcry, which is a really good utility spell. Also has a good shard. Ice Vortex is a good support spell. It gives you nice vision. And again, good in a shard build. Then we've got Scurry, which is in general is good on ranged cores. And Primal Split, finally, is an amazing ultimate if you're good at micro. Now let's talk about some strong combos. Obviously, there's way too many strong combos for me to list all of them here. But here are some of the most broken ones. First of all, we got the bug we mentioned earlier, Spirits plus some Illusion ability. You just get Spirits around every Illo with Axe. Hopefully, they fix that bug soon. And Aftershock has lots of broken combos. We're going to look for abilities with short cooldowns or with multiple charges. And ideally, we're going to have multiple of those abilities. Some of the best ones are Ball Lightning, Viscous Nasal Ghoul, Proximity Mines, Static Remnant, and Counterspell. I talked earlier about how Essence Flux is very overrated, but if you get it together with Ball Lightning, you can just sip around all day. Or if you get it together with Mana Shield, you can just toggle the shield on and off, which actually counts as a spell for Essence Flux, so you just get free mana forever. We talked about Vengeance Aura already. Great if you have some sort of Axe upgrade like Chaotic Offering or Mass Serpent Wards. Rot plus Infest is actually also a really strong combo. You just get an Axe, you turn on Rot, and you jump inside a Frontliner for hilarious AoE damage. Speaking of hilarious AoE damage, Freezing Field does so much damage and has many great combos. Most of them require the Shard to unleash their full power. So for example, if you have Shrikuchi and Skeleton Walk, you can get Invis and uh, a lot of speed while you're ulting. Blade Fury gives us a free BKB while we're ulting. Uh, Blink is also great, ideally from Quop, but AM Blink is also good. And then the last combo I have here is just a straightforward right-click combination of Marksmanship and Presence of the Dark Lord. This Marksmanship removes space armor. And that makes presence easy. There are also some abilities that are especially strong when you pick them on their own hero, usually because they have strong talents. And for these, it might even be worth deny picking them, just so your opponent doesn't get uh, these great abilities. First of all, we've got Little Shredder, which is very strong in Snapfire. If you go for a right click build, your hero will be broken once you reach level 20. In normal Dota, the full damage on Shredder talent is balanced out by Snap being just a poor right clicker, especially before level 20. But combined with other right-click abilities, you'll be decent in the early game and unstoppable once you hit 20. Shadow Realm is great in general, but it's especially strong in Dark Willow, where the talents just give you much more uptime. Iron Shell is a decent pick on any tanky melee heroes, but it really shines on Darkseer, who gets a whopping 4 talents for Iron Shell. Walrus Punch is good on any ranged hero, but it's even better on Tusk himself. Spin Web is already a strong pick, but it's especially strong on Broodmother, who has 2 strong talents for the webs, in fact, it's actually quite difficult to make Brood a good hero without the web. Tombstone is strong on any support, but even strong on Undying, who has 4 relevant talents. And Eidolons are usually meh, but Enigma's got talents. Black Cannon is a strong ability on ranged right clicks in general, but it's especially powerful in Gyro, who has 3 talents for it. Chronosphere is a special case, because Faces Void can move inside Chrono, no matter who casts it, as any Rubik player can attest. So Chrono is especially strong for Void's teammates because then you get two heroes who can move freely inside the sphere and by the same token Chronosphere is worse if you're playing against Void. Finally let's talk about actually playing the game. Ability Draft is still Dota, so most of the same rules apply as in any ordinary game of AP. The biggest difference is that there will often be one or two people in your team or the enemy team who have great builds that will pop once they've acquired certain items or levels. So if you have such a hero on your team, your job is to protect them, make sure they have a great game. Make space for them so that they can farm and hit their timings. Buy items like Glimmer Cape, Full Staff, Lotus Orb, Guardian Grief, Solar Crest to protect them and to enable them. And if there's a broken hero on the enemy team, you want to focus on making their life miserable. Gank them, keep them from farming, block their jungle camps and sentries, push before they hit their timings. 
of course, this is not a completely new concept. That's what they generally do about carries in Dota. But in AD, you sometimes get heroes that scale way harder than any normal hero. Hyper carries, if you will. Oftentimes, AD games are decided by which team can enable their hyper carry better. But don't forget the basics. You still want to ward and de ward like a normal game. You still need to carry detection against Invis. And it's still a good idea to make use of your inventory slots by buying cheap, efficient items like Wraith Bands, Wand, Wind Lace, perhaps even some items that don't start with a W. Of course, this guide is barely scratching the surface. There's plenty more to be said about AD. So if you want me to make more specific videos about certain aspects of uh, AD, please tell me in the comment section. And before you go, consider clicking one of these videos on the screen for some more Dota content and hopeless building. I'll see you there.